So liquid coolers do come in lots of different shapes, sizes and mounting and there's also Intel and AMD. So today on the show we'll be showing you how to install it on an Intel platform with an Ace Tech based cooler. Now lots of other aftermarket people such as Corsair go ahead and implement their own mounting system which you'll have to refer to the manual there but if you're using an Ace Tech one which is pretty straightforward to identify which is just a basically a round block with little teeth on the edge, very simple and most of the time they'll have Ace Tech branding either on the box or on the pump itself and you'll be able to install it that way. So when it comes to identifying your cooler, you need to figure out what kind of mounting system you'll be using, whether you're using Intel side, which is what we're showing you today, or AMD. Also too, you need to identify and make sure that it is an Acer Tech one so you can follow this video properly. To identify, it's either going to say Acer Tech on the block or the pump or anywhere on the box, or you're going to go ahead and find it out by just looking at the block itself. If it's round with this sort of teeth design, chances are that's a Acer Tech design cooler. Also you could go ahead and just Google your model and find out whether it is or or isn't. Now the one we're using today is just a standard 120mm part of Intel's cooling lineup which is normally used on their 2011 platform coolers but today we're installing on platform 1150. So we'll get to the system in just a minute but I normally recommend if you're going with one of these 120mm single units go ahead and get a high-end air cooler because chances are you're going to get a better result as it's going to give you more surface area because when it comes to cooling it's all about surface area. So the system itself is, well, whatever I really found on my shelf. So if you want to know a rundown of the specs, we'll run down pretty quickly. So in terms of storage, we have three drives in RAID 0 on a RAID card. On top of that, we have a graphics card that's a 7850 from AMD. We also have an Intel Core i7, can't remember the chip number, but it is a Core i7, as well as 8 gigs of RAM from Kingston, and a one and a 900 watt, in fact, power supply from Antec, all in the $300 PC case. So, it's not the most optimised case, but if you're in this situation where you want water cooling and you're in this kind of case, we'll show you how to do that because there's no actual 120mm mount anywhere on the case. But if you're in this situation where you don't actually have water cooling support, lots of people say, ah, oh, just cut some holes in the top or in the side panel or something, but I don't really like doing that. So we'll actually show you how to mount it up within the case itself and still get decent temperatures. Also too, if you're in a case like this, I'd recommend going ahead and just buying a better case, one with better airflow optimization, because you might be over heating or experiencing worse temperatures mainly because it's sort of like an oven in there where there's no actual airflow everything's just sort of sitting there and you're not going to get a good result so maybe consider investing in a better case before you go about investing in a better cooler. So what are we going to need to install this cooler into this system? Well to start off with we'll need a screwdriver set, nothing in particular important just grab yourself a set so I'm just going to use my iFixit 54 bit driver kit, um, you could just use a standard household driver kit, it doesn't really matter you just need to pull the side panel off and then screw down the cooler. We're also going to need a little box to put our little baggies and other stuff that came on the cooler, we'll obviously need the cooler itself, we're using a pre-filled one, 120mm one, or you're doing like a triple or a double, whatever you do so decide. We also need the mounting uh, accessories and kit and all that to mount it up to your system, remembering AMD will be a little bit different to this where you've got sometimes little clips rather than these mounting screws. We also need uh, some isopropyl alcohol and toilet paper slash tissues or any kind of other paper to wipe stuff off and possibly a anti-static uh, little cloth. You don't have to use that if you don't want. We also need a knife or pair of scissors or side cutters just to cut off any zip ties or anything like that if you've done any decent cable management because we will be removing the motherboard. We also need some thermal compound as well as a pair of pliers in case again something does get caught and you need to take it out. Maybe a standoff gets stuck to a screw and we need to just grab that. Also too, thermal compound, it doesn't really matter what you get. Just get something decent like this OEM one. Don't really go out and spend your money on. Go and get something like Icy Diamonds or Arctic Silver 5 is what I really recommend, but there is no one good one out there, as we said in our last video. There's really lots out there, and it's really what people think, but just make sure you get one that's non-conductive in case you do get it in your system. So to start off with, we'll need to go ahead and set ourselves up on a clean anti-static workspace. So this table that I do record on has an anti-static sheet over the top of it, so I'm all good there. Also too, when I do these mods, I wear an ankle strap that's connected up to a piece of metal, so I'm not sort of going to zap the system. I, I wear it around my ankle just so it's not in the shots when I'm actually doing these videos. Now what we're going to do is disconnect any wires, cables, anything like that, make sure the PC is powered off, and we're all good there, so we don't go electrocuting ourselves or shorting out anything in the system. 
Also too, just a quick side note, make sure there's no drinks around there, don't be eating food or anything like that while working on your computer, and make sure your hands are washed and oil free because you don't want your system to be full of oil. Once we've done that, we're going to lay our computer down on the anti-static workspace that we set up just a moment ago and go ahead and take off the side panel. If you still have the box for your computer that you came in, then go ahead and put the side panel in that box, but if you don't, maybe stick it on top of your bed under a doona or something, or maybe on top of it, just so you don't go scratch the side panel window if you do have one. If not, just stick it on somewhere that's safe and it won't get sat on or anything because you don't want a big dint in your side panel. Once we get the side panel off, we can check out the insides of our system. Now, if it's looking a bit messy like this, we'll tidy it up once we go ahead and install everything, so you might want to quickly go and grab some zip ties while you're at this stage before you go pulling your system apart. What we actually need to do for this is take the motherboard out, so we're going to need to do a few things. If you like me and have a RAID card or a sound card or go ahead and have a graphics card, you're going to need to remove them first. So pop any screws out, whether they be thumb screws or actual screw screws like we have in this system. Pull out the cards, make sure there's no wires attached and you don't force anything. Once those two are out, set them aside again if you have their boxes, still stick them in their boxes or just set them aside in your workspace, making sure you don't knock them off any tables. Once we're done that, we're going to go ahead and disconnect every other connector on our motherboard, making sure you take photos of it before you go ahead and do that, especially front I.O. If you have a motherboard where it's not marked out, you're going to have some troubles going ahead and actually finding where they go back in without having some Google documentation. And if your computer's pulled apart, chances are you're not going to have a very good time finding any documentation without a computer. Once everything is disconnected, we're going to remove the motherboard screws from their standoffs. We're going to remove them, not really in any order, just remove them all and then lift the motherboard out by the CPU cooler. Making sure nothing's tangled and making sure you don't drag the motherboard on the actual standoffs because you could go ahead and damage the motherboard's traces and then you've just ruined that. Once we have the motherboard out, we can go ahead and remove the stock cooler. Take a flathead screwdriver and just turn the little nubbins around to where the arrow points into the cooler and then lift off in a cross pattern. Make sure you do a cross pattern so you're not putting any excess stress on the actual CPU because that's not a good thing. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and take our isopropyl alcohol and our tissues and go ahead and wipe off any excess or any thermal compound at all, making sure you can get it as clean as possible. Make sure you don't go ahead and pour any isopropyl alcohol actually on the CPU because it's not going to be very good for it and you might get the uh, isopropyl alcohol under the socket, which means you'll short it out when you go and try to turn the system back on. Now, you can go ahead and clean up the cooler if you want or you can chuck that cooler straight in the bin. I normally recommend cleaning the cooler up and just putting it in a cupboard or something in case your water cooler does die and you need something to back it up while you go and get another cooler. It's just something I like to do, but you can go chuck yours in the bin where they should live. Then what we're going to do is make sure we don't have any other mounting stuff, so maybe if you're on the AMD side you could remove that, but generally on the Intel platform you're not going to have any standard backplates. Then we're going to prep our CPU cooler, our liquid cooler in fact, by removing any packaging from our stuff. So as you can see here, mine's sort of already opened because I've used this way before and my backplate is a little bit broken but we'll just pretend it's all good. What we're going to do now is line up the back plate with our socket and then push it in. Now most of them will have some sort of sticky tabs or something like that. If they don't, just use a bit of gaff tape or something and you can go ahead and hold that on there till we're done with this. Then we're going to go ahead and take our little retaining bracket and put that over the top of the notches and line up the CPU cooler. Now at this stage it's up to you whether you want the branding the right way up if you've got a window and it might, might look nice or you can just go ahead and completely ignore it and put whatever which way you want. Next we need to go ahead and install some thermal compound on this system CPU. Don't put anything more than really a grain of rice to a pea-shaped size because anymore we'll just end up having it overflowing into your socket and probably do something really bad to your system. If you've already got a new thermal solution, you can go ahead and just use the stock thermal compound. I've never really had a problem with them except on the H100i. So if you've got a H100i, maybe wipe that off and go ahead and install your own. I've had a problem where it hasn't really spread properly before leading to bad temperatures. Other than that, you can go ahead and just continue on with this. Now we're going to take our mounting bracket and go ahead and put it over the notches like we did before, line it up and then go ahead and tighten these screws down in a cross pattern. If you need a screwdriver, just tighten it lightly with all your fingers in again a cross pattern and then go ahead and fully tighten it down with your screwdriver. Make sure you're not putting excessive pressure on each of the corners because again you might damage your CPU and that's pretty expensive to go and replace. Once we've gone ahead and mounted up the cooler to the actual CPU and the socket itself, we're going to go ahead and lie the system back down if it was stood up again and 
and you need that space and we're going to go ahead and drop the motherboard in this time holding it by the actual water cooling pump combo and using your other hand to hold uh, the radiator itself because it might end up being pretty heavy. Once we drop the motherboard back in we're going to go ahead and reinstall any of the standoffs and everything that we took out before not including the wires because we'll get to that in just a minute. Now we're going to go ahead and actually find a spot for our radiator. Now at this point in a case like this what we're going to do is just sort of sit it at the front. Now we've got the fan on an intake so what it's doing is taking air in from this side and blowing it out that way. What we're going to do is just sit it so the air can be taken in from that smaller 80 mil intake. Now that's not a very big intake but the point is we're still getting air there making sure you're not sort of suffocating it up against the front leaving about that much room or whatever's in the video because my finger reference isn't that big from when you're watching there. Maybe give it about five or ten centimeters depending on how big your case is. Next we can go ahead and install any of the cables that we did go ahead and remove including the 24 pin as well as the CPU power as well as the front IO making sure you double check with your pictures as to see which one's which. Doesn't really matter if you plug things in the wrong way around especially if it's just a front IO because it can be easily switched around. Once we're done that, we're just going to do a test boot now before we go ahead and actually stick in our graphics cards and all the other stuff. We're just going to go ahead and plug in a display, power and keyboard. Hit the power on button, making sure that it works. If it doesn't, make sure you just check the front I.O. And then go ahead and boot straight into the BIOS. If you're getting temperatures around the 20s to 30 degrees around that temperature, you should be just fine. As long as you're in a sort of medium climate, which is about, again, room temperature of 20 to 30 degrees, you should be getting around those temperatures with your water solution. If you're getting anything really hot, like 80 or 90 degrees, that means the mount hasn't been successful. And you're going to need to go ahead, take the CPU cooler off and everything, clean it up again and then repeat the steps to go ahead and reinstall your CPU cooler. At this stage if your boot has been successful shut the computer down by just pulling the power out because you can't really exit the BIOS properly then we're going to just go ahead and reinstall our graphic card and RAID card. Once we've done that we can stick our side panel back on but not before we do a full boot into Windows because it seems to be whenever you put your side panel back on something bad always happens. Once we know that we can get in and out of Windows just fine we can stick our side panel back on and stick this back under our desk or on our desk and we're all good to go. Other than that, a proper 54-bit screwdriver kit like what I have is helpful, but you're only really going to use two or three parts here. Maybe have a magnet on hand if you have a sort of issue with dropping screws into your computer, and just double check you don't have any loose wires here or there. Give it a bit of a clean up if you are in there and it's been on for a while, and go ahead and go and do some cable management if you too so desire. You don't really have to, but I always recommend doing that. So overall, installing a water cooling unit is always going to benefit your temperatures. Whether you're just getting one of these 120mm ones, it's going to benefit you over a stock cooler. Yes, you go ahead and get a high-end air cooler, which would be almost the same procedure, just with a different uh, sort of way to do it. But it's all about the same here. This applies for Acer Tech Intel CPUs. We will do one eventually for the AMD side and bigger radiators there. Guys, thanks for watching. Give us a like or dislike depending on how you felt. Let me know if you are with me and you do or not like these sort of 120mm ones. Also too, let me know if you have any tips if you mount these sort of coolers differently if you don't have actual mounting points. Also too, give us a sub if you like this kind of content because we are coming out with water cooling your CPU versus water cooling your GPU. So that'll be pretty exciting there. I'll see you guys next time for another video. Thank you for watching.